My name is Professor Wong and I'm going to talk to you about um, industrial organizational psychology. So industrial organizational psychology, I know that's a mouthful, it's hard to say, so we abbreviate it IO psychology. And what we're doing in industrial organizational psychology is we're, we're looking at people's behaviors, attitudes in the workplace. So we're taking a lot of psychological principles essentially and applying them to work settings. And in terms of industrial organizational psychology, there's the part that we call industrial that focuses a lot on measurement. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to measure people's knowledge, skills, and abilities and other things. So if you took a class with me, you'd hear me say KSAOs, which stand for knowledge, skills, abilities, and other things could be things like personality characteristics, like how conscientious somebody is or how agreeable they are, because that might have implications for how they do in the workplace. So what industrial psychologists do is they measure these things um, and then they try to match them with job requirements. So that's one part of the, of, um, the field is the industrial side. The organizational side is more that social influence, so how people are influenced by others around them. When you think about most work situations, there's very much a social environment, there's a culture, there are norms and, and that sort of thing that influence how people um, behave at work. So, so just to summarize, what we're doing in industrial organizational psychology is we're taking psychological principles, we're applying them to the workplace, and there's two parts to it. There's the measurement part where we're measuring human attributes, and then the, there's the other part, the social part, where we're um, looking at people as they work in these social environments. And the measurement part's the industrial part, the social part's the organizational part. So what I want to do next is talk to you a little bit about some sub-areas of industrial organizational psychology. So one sub-area, I've sort of alluded to this a little bit, is selection and placement. That what we're trying to do is choose the best people for a job. Imagine if you had a company and you, um, 20 people show up for one position, like how do you choose the best person? Well, what industrial organizational psychologists do is they'll take, they'll measure people's um, knowledge and skills and abilities, and then they'll try to match them to the job requirements. So if you've ever, if you've ever applied for a job and been given a, a test, we call those selection tests, and it's very likely that some of those selection tests have been designed by industrial organizational psychologists. So one part is selection and placement. Another part is performance management, though. In order for people to perform well, they have to know how they're performing. So think about if you had a class and you had no feedback at all from your professor in the class. You would have no idea how you were doing, so you couldn't improve. So it's the same in the workplace where you need to know how you're doing so you can figure out how to improve. The problem is that we're not great at giving each other honest, accurate feedback. And there are a lot of reasons for that, um, but tr trying to get people to be able to give accurate feedback and to give it in a way that's honest and, and in a way that somebody's going to accept, um, that's sort of difficult, but that's another area that industrial organizational psychologists where we work. Um, an, an additional area is organizational behavior. That area is all the social aspect I mentioned before. Um, there's a whole social aspect to work, and that's what that organizational behavior um, refers to. The idea that when you're working, you're influenced by not only your supervisor or your manager, but also by your coworkers. That you're influenced by um, norms and culture in the organization. So that's what that organizational behavior part is. And then finally, the last part I wanted to mention to you, the last like sub-area of industrial psychology, is quality of work life. So. When people are at work, it takes a great, a lot of time is spent at work. So we want to make sure that work is as pleasurable as it can be, right? So work, if, you ha if you're in a good work setting, um, you're going to feel challenged, you're going to feel um, that you're growing and learning, you're going to enjoy going to work. But if you're in a bad work situation, that is not at all what you're going to experience, right? You'll probably experience stress and you'll probably get burned out and so on. So the idea is that quality of work life, that your life um, is this balance of work and non-work. And we're trying to help people balance that, but also to help them be happy when they are at work and to feel that they're growing and developing. So what I've done is I've mentioned just four sub-areas within industrial organizational psychology. Um, I mentioned selection and placement. I mentioned performance management, organizational behavior, and quality of work life. So there are many other areas too. I just chose four to mention to you, but there are other sub-areas within industrial organizational psychology.
So the next thing I want to mention to you is, or talk to you about, is where industrial organizational psychologists work. So one area where one location could be a university setting, like me, right? So a professor who teaches and does research, that's one location um, where industrial organizational psychologists might work. There actually are a good number of jobs in government, though. So at the federal level, at the state level, industrial organizational psychologists are hired a fair amount to help with things like selection and managing performance. Um, the military uses a lot of industrial organizational psychologists. Um, we also get jobs in industry, so usually larger corporations. So Ford, General Motors, um, IBM, PepsiCo, Procter & Gamble, some larger corporations typically hire industrial organizational psychologists. And then finally, there are consulting firms. And the consulting firms, what they do is, if a company's having a problem, if they want to, for example, improve the quality of their products or their services, or if they want to change their culture, um, they often will hire consulting companies to help them do that. And industrial organizational psychologists will often work for these consulting firms. So um, again, there are many options, many locations where industrial organizational psychologists can work. So what I want to do next is just mention to you, like, well, what can you do with your degree? So um, you can have a PhD. Um, that would be more, that's more of a research degree. So one thing that I tell students is if, they're, if you are going to get a PhD, really think about if you like research or not. And really think if you're wanting to work in a university setting. Um, because a PhD really is a degree that's teaching you how to be a researcher. The PhD programs in industrial psychology, they're very competitive to get into. So they are difficult to get into. Um, I'm not trying to discourage you from applying or trying to get into a PhD program, but I just want you to know that they are difficult to get into. Um, so if you do want to pursue that, Make sure that you meet the minimum qualifications to apply, and also consider if you like research or not. Um, the nice thing about industrial psychology is if you have a master's degree, you, can, um, you will be able to get a job without difficulty. Um, a master's degree is setting you up to apply um, knowledge. It's setting you up to go in and apply what people with PhDs are, um, the research that they're doing. So somebody with a PhD maybe is doing research, somebody with a master's degree is maybe taking that research and applying it to a work situation um, directly. So keep that in mind. You don't need a PhD to, to have a really um, good career in industrial organizational psychology. The master's degree is a really good option, um, so keep that in mind. And then also with a bachelor's degree, um, people with bachelor's degrees in psychology can work in areas that overlap um, with, um, in industrial organizational psychology. So you can work in areas like um, recruitment or interviewing um, or training. So those are some areas where um, somebody who's a psychology major with a bachelor's degree um, might be, you can't really call yourself an industrial psychologist, but you can be working in areas that overlap with industrial psychology. So finally, what I want to do is show you some more information, places where you can get more information. Um, if you think this sounds interesting to you, I encourage you to take my classes. I teach two industrial psychology classes regularly. One is um, psychology in the workplace. And the other is diversity in the workplace. So um, those classes, um, I would love to see you in my classes. Um, I also I have an email address here that you can reach me at. I have a faculty web page. And I also have a link here for um, if you're interested in learning more about industrial organizational psychology. So thank you.